Hi guys, I want to talk to you today about the SP Racing F3 Evo flight controller. I got this Q100 kit from China. It was about 40 bucks. It was uh, just individual parts. It had the flight controller, a video transmitter, a camera, the frame, the motors and propellers, a power connector, and that was it. The first problem I had with the board was connecting it to the computer. I had to make sure to use the correct USB ports and the correct USB cord making sure neither were intended just for charging. My next problem is that this boot port had to be jumped together when first plugging in the USB into power so that I could initially flash firmware. After jumping those pins and plugging in USB, the blue lights on the the blue LED lights on the board started flashing. Then I had issues actually loading the firmware on. Whenever I opened up either beta flight or clean flight, I'd only get CLI mode. That issue was solved by using a program either Impulse RC or Zadig, some USB program that'll update your drivers and get the board connecting correctly. After getting the board to correct, connect correctly, I was able to load the correct firmware from the firmware tab. and just get the newest F3 Racing Evo firmware. And once you get your USB ports configured correctly so it's loading, it should take the firmware correctly. My next issue was that I had soldered my receiver to this DSM port. I am using a Spectrum satellite receiver, a DSM-2. Apparently there's occasionally interference with the RX, the UART RX3 port. So what I did is I moved my RX3 over here to URT2. So I'm currently using power and ground from the DSM port and the signals being sent to URT2, I believe. Once soldering the receiver to your correct port, you'll need to go into your ports tab in beta flight or clean flight and take the correct UART port and you're going to want to turn on serial RX on that port. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you go into your configuration tab and down in receiver you'll want to select serial based receiver. That's for your S bus for this type of spectrum receiver. Below it you're going to have an option and if you're using a DSM, DSM-2, you're going to want to select Spectrum 1024. The other selection, 102000, is for the DSM-X receiver. If you're having an issue with the receiver binding, you may need to do what they call a SAT bind on-off, and that's done by going into your CLI tab and typing in SAT bind 0. Just Google um, it for videos on actually how to do this, the setting your SAT bind. I'm not 100% sure on that. Now once you have your remote connecting to your receiver you'll first power up the board make sure your flaps and your arming button are off then you hold your trainer button power on And once it's solid, it means it's connected. You'll see the blue light on the board has gone off. And that means that we're bound. Now if you go into your receiver tab, you can see your inputs, and when you move the sticks, you should see the inputs on the computer. 
once you've obviously the board's hooked up to the computer you should see your imports the important thing is that you're going to need your throttle input to read below a thousand before the arming procedure will actually actually take place that adjustment can either be done possibly in sub trim or on the controller once you get your throttle under a thousand and your yaw pitch and roll close to 1500 you can then make sure that flat have been set in the DX6i if you go into your flaps it appears to be um, approximately 50 up and 50 down Once you have your throttle going under a thousand, you can go into your modes tab. And in your modes tab is where you're going to actually set the function for these switches. This switch should be your arm, it's usually aux one. You'll see it in your receiver tab and it'll respond when you flick these in your receiver tab. In the modes tab, you'll see when you select the arm function and you use aux one, you should see a small yellow indicator jump around when you flick the switch. You want that indicator in the yellow bar when you flick it. And the important thing is that once it's being armed, the tab needs to actually be highlighted. The second switch, which is the one that the flaps activate, will be your angle horizon acro selection switch. Once I had all of those functions together, you can see a small blue light that turns on when I arm. And it finally spools up. Just want to talk a little bit about how I built this. This is the SPF3 EVO flight controller we were talking about. As you can see, these are the motor wires soldered in. This is your power wire. There's where the receiver is soldered in. Here's where I grab power for my video transmitter. Now this video transmitter is actually the Eosheen DTX-03. It's got the camera soldered in to the bottom of it. And this board, not only is it a video transmitter, but it actually takes an SD card. And records to an SD card. And once doing that, I modified the canopy. fit around the video transmitter. And still clear the propellers.
Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps some of you. Special shout out to Elite RC Facebook group, Tiny Woot Micro FPV Pilots of the World Facebook group. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up and give me a subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.